This week, a pair of major characters we've come to love and admire heroically fought to protect the planet Reach. Danny Sapani, who plays Admiral Jacob Keyes, and Bentley Kalu, also known as Vanek134. And I get to talk to them about this monumental episode. We go behind the scenes to learn the secrets of the fall of Reach and find out how actors become soldiers. An all new edition of Halo the Series Declassified starts right now. Attention Spartans, I'm Sydney Goodman, and this is Halo the Series Declassified. This week's episode of Halo the Series changes literally everything. Seriously, everything. And we're going to be talking all about it, spoilers included. The show is called Declassified after all. So if you haven't seen season two, episode four yet, what are you waiting for? Hunker down with your favorite screen, watch it on Paramount Plus, and then come back here for all the insider info. The fall of Reach marks an important turning point in Halo the series. Nothing will ever be the same again. We here at Halo the Series Declassified thought you might like to see how this monumental event in Halo lore was brought to life on screen. Check it out. The battle on Reach was fantastic. It was so much fun to shoot it. It's a huge, devastating moment. Just let Reach fall. They knew this was gonna happen. And this is humankind taking an almost last stand. And being able to bring that to live action is hard. We had to look at ways and means of being able to see that fall take place. Run. The fall of Reach impacts the overall story in a massive way because as most people who know Halo know, the fall of Reach is a central part of Halo storytelling. It's a massive event in Halo lore. Focus on the mission. Stay alert. It was a really painstaking, time-consuming process. And each step along the way, they vetted the safety first. And then we talked endlessly about how we were going to do it. Well, they're going to be here and they're going to be over here. You know, it's a big deal, uh, the fall of Reach. It's a call to self-sacrifice. Having our Spartans there and being able to really feel sort of the desperation of that moment was really important for us. It's the loss of humanity's stronghold. The scope and scale of the conflict and of the battle is huge and was very, very exciting to shoot. We need to be efficient today. We're gonna to move very fast. At times harrowing to shoot. Reach is under attack. The approach to filming the fall of Reach was, I think, the same approach that we took to everything this season in terms of being in our characters' perspectives. A good portion of the first part of the episode, we're following Master Chief and character named Talia Perez across the city of Reach during the attack. The amount of time, the amount of effort, the amount of passion and love that you need to have, it's so hard to do something as big as this. Then we would rehearse it, then we would do it, and then we would do it again, and then we would do it again. Either you get it right on the first take, and then it's like, oh, amazing, we got it. Or you don't get it right, and you have like 20 takes of explosions and explosions and explosions, and the reset of that. To be with this beautiful cast and this beautiful crew, this freaking awesome crew, amazing. I think we were able to pull off how momentous the stakes were, and at the same time have it feel like a very personal battle as well. The fall of Reach forced me to feel all of my feelings, but we will get through this together, especially because I've got Bentley Kalu here to help me process everything. Hi, Bentley. Thanks for joining. Hi, Sydney. How you doing? Thanks for having me. Let's talk about the battle of Reach and Vanek's role in the battle. I mean, how did you react when you read the script and saw everything that he goes through? The fall of Reach, when I got the episode, I wasn't surprised. Because, you know, Vanek is a traditional Spartan. What I mean by that is there's only one or two ways out, being what he is. It's, uh, it's, it's the highest honor of a Spartan to lay it all out on the battlefield, if you know what I mean. And the way that events played on the fall of Reach, that would have been the obvious way that if, if anybody was going to make any sort of sacrifices, it was going to be your boy Vanek. So, you know. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. Do they warn you as the actor that like, hey, this happens, or they just hand you a script like any other script, and it's a fun surprise, I guess, when you read it? David um, was mm -hmm. was courteous enough to um, have a conversation with me a couple of months prior, actually. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but when I got to set, they didn't know that I had already talked to David about it. So they were kind of stepping in eggshells. <laughs> it was funny to me because I was like, look, I already know. Why don't we talk about Vanek's journey from when we first meet him dropping into Madrigal to yep. lover of nature shows. That arc was something that I was actually particularly proud of. When you started off, his relationship with um, his fellow Spartans was um, one of respect that's earned and not given and holding everybody accountable for what, you know, what roles they had to play. And of course, respecting the hierarchy. Right. Then you fast forward to season two and he has an affinity with nature, um, which was actually funny to me when I read it, talking about different animals. And that was hilarious. And I loved it. But if you look at the connection he had with the birds and there's a little bit of the old Vanek and the new Vanek, because, you know, he would die for the team. And when you get to season two, he would die for the birds because he loved the birds so much. So mm -hmm. I kind of made that connection with both of them. So Vanek's final fight with the Arbiter is intense, to say the least. Um, what can you tell me about shooting that day and the overall experience? If I could sum it up into one word, it was awesome. The stunt coordinator, Philip, was, was awesome. Not only him being good at his job, but just as somebody that his communication skills were just impeccable. And I, I have to take my hat off to the stunt guys because what you see would not be that without the stunt team. So they're, they're pretty awesome, you know. Mm -hmm. Bentley, thank you so much for coming by and just thank you for everything that you have brought as Vanek uh, to Halo the series. Thank you, Sydney. I appreciate it. And um, thank you for all the fans. Thank you for appreciating the work that we put in. And um, thank you. Go, go, go! Hi, my name is Jack Nevels. So my position here in the production of Halo is the military advisor. When you look at the Halo game, there's some very unique things to it. And we try to capture some of that in the fight choreography, try to make it authentic by having consistent feel as far as the lingo and some of the dialogue that we use. Then nice and tall. Fall out. Fall out. Take your position. The tactics that the, our Marines are using. My background is I'm a 25 year special operations veteran. I spent a couple years in the 1st Ranger Battalion. And then I spent the next 23 years in the Green Berets or the Special Forces in the U.S. Army. Stand direct, your shoulders back. The military authenticity of the show is really important, not just in the gunplay and the battle scenes and all that, but actually the characters, Master Chief and Kai and Riz and Vanek, getting to see them as people because that's the reality of warfare. These are, these are people. And these people have emotions and they have feelings and they get burned out and stuff happens to them. And when we're training folks, I try not to just make it like a sport shooting thing. I like it to be more like how people feel when they're in a gunfight. You've ever seen 100% action. You've got to see your body like. I've had the opportunity to work with all of the Spartans. They are all super, super professional. They work their butts off to play these superhero characters that we all enjoy watching. They're very, very keen on making sure what they do looks authentic. It's a pleasure to work with them. It's awesome. to talk to one of the heroes from this week's episode, Danny Sapani, who plays Admiral Jacob Keyes. How are you doing, Danny? Welcome. Very well, Sydney. Thank you for having me. Let's talk about the Battle of Reach and Admiral Keyes' role in the battle. So how did you react when you read the script and saw everything that he experiences in the episode? I think uh, my initial reaction was probably shock. Um, as the show has developed, the stakes get much higher. Danny, Jacob's speech in this episode is phenomenal. Tell me what was going through your mind during that performance. Oh my God. <laughs> what Jacob really needs to convey in, at that time, it's a very emotional speech because, you know, the fact that um, he's sending people to their most likely probable death is a, makes it a very 
um, emotive um, situation. And it's Jacob's character to do the right thing and and to stand with his men um, and women and 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 to to deal with the situation in hand. Yes. And is there anything you would like to say to fans? I hope you enjoy um, the show. There's a lot of hard work and effort that's gone into this. The scripts this time round um, have a, a very different angle. We've had a, a, a great team with um, our new showrunner, David, and, and I think the possibilities with this um, story are, are endless. You know, I think there's a lot to offer here. So I hope, I hope everybody enjoys it. And finally, do you have any favorite moments um, from set while filming season two? Um, God, I love the scene with um, uh, Halsey and um, Bakim Woodbine's character in the lift. I just think that there's there's always room for for some lightheartedness in these moments um, of, of great sort of jeopardy, and and that's definitely one of my favorite scenes. What exactly are you doing with this person? Three minutes ago, I was a pirate. We're making progress. You know, the sort of, the kind of antagonism between us and while, you know, we're also dealing with the emotional kind of um, backstory between Halsey and Jacob and, you know, Soren's right in the middle, just, it, it's a great scene, great energy. There's a lot of history in that elevator. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Danny, for coming by and uh, really loved having you on Declassified. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. The Covenant attack on Reach was carried out by countless Covenant soldiers led by the Arbiter. Our Declassified cameras were lucky enough to nab this special look at the visual effects and motion capture technology that brought these ruthless aliens to life. Hi, I'm uh, Wojtek Zielinski. I'm the visual effects supervisor for Halo season two. The whole season is packed with super exciting action sequences, which include Sankhili warriors. It is massive, yes. Hello, my name is Mitchell Kalish, the visual effects production manager. And no, this is not what I wear every day. I'm wearing an XN's motion capture suit. What it enables us to do is record the data live on the day while we're shooting and get motion capture imagery and data that matches exactly what we see in camera. At the end of the day, we've got a performance, we've got data that matches exactly what our actors did, and we can use that as a foundation for creating some beautiful animation and visual effects. In addition to the mocap suit, to make sure that we're getting the best performance possible, the best visual effects possible, we also use this facewear head camera rig. Basically what it does is we mount it with the helmet to the head of our actors, and it's got this really close up HD macro camera that enables us to get HD video of the tracking markers on their face that really just enable us to take that data and translate it into the animation when we're creating our CG characters and stay faithful to the actor's original performance. I would like to show you a few examples. What are the next stages and how we use the data which we capture on the day. So here we have two clips. One is from the witness camera, which illustrates what the stunt performers were doing and what the camera operator was doing. And in this window, we see actually what the camera sees. So literally this is straight from the system and it shows it's applied to the skeletons. And this is showing what we capture. And as you can imagine, just looking at that, there's a lot of work required actually to make it look good in the shot. And then we can move to the next stage. This is basically, I would call it almost finished shot. Both characters are rendered, full shaders, texture passes. This is an example, it was sort of a proof of concept for us, how we want to use this technology on the day. The passion to bring the world to life faithfully, to make these Spartans, these almost one-ton super soldiers come to life across stunts and VFX, and it feels alive and real. And I think that's the biggest challenge from what you hear to what you see to the physicality of a fight between a Spartan super soldier and a Covenant Sangheili. Those are really, really hard things to pull off in a physical world, and the commitment to doing that faithfully both for new audience, but also for fans, is incredible. Thank you for being 
here to help me get through everything that happened in this week's episode of Halo the Series. I am so grateful to Danny Sapani and Bentley Kalu for chatting with me from London. Next week on another edition of Halo the Series Declassified, I'll be joined by Bokeem Woodbine, aka Soren066, and Natasha Kolzak, who plays Riz. In the meantime, here's a sneak peek at the Halo the Series Season 2, Episode 5, which streams in seven days on Paramount+. Plus. Tell me what you're looking for. Our son. Kessler, he's ten years old, wears a helmet. Who the hell are you? Who are you? You forgot your name. It's close now. Save me. Do not deny your purpose. Do not forsake your name. Protect her. We're losing him. Please, will you help him?